I'm going to meet Julie, who is asking me to come and talk to her about her dissertation, which is going to be on my great grandmother, Alberta. I think Julie is in the dining room and um, I'm going to find out more about what she's planning to research. The dissertation is hard. I've never done one before. <laughs> what's, the, what's the longest I've... essay you've written? Probably 5,000 words. Well, that's quite long. Yeah, I think that's it. And this one's 25,000, so this is five times as much. 25,000 um, yeah. words. That's, that's roughly a, a quarter of a novel. Because yeah. it's, it's not as though Julie doesn't have other things to do. I know. I mean, it's not as though she isn't making television, <laughs> reporting on the news, teaching yoga. I know. Teaching yoga teachers, helping at Mapperton. I'm sure I've forgotten something um, from the list of, of your hats. It's not quite as well, many hats as me, but it, it's, a good, it's a good view that she has. So those of you who are new to our channel or just wondering exactly what I'm doing my master's in, I'm doing a master's in country house studies. It is actually a thing. Uh, I think it's becoming incredibly popular. So I've, I've done it through University of Buckingham and we've had brilliant uh, lectures. One of the lectures uh, that we did have was Earl Spencer, so Princess Diana's uh, brother, and that was fascinating. So like amazing lectures, and I've learned so much during this period, but now the lectures are over, and now I have to focus on my dissertation. Now the rubber meets the road, and she's actually got to start writing something. Mm -hmm. 20,000 words, and the topic is? Well, the topic is Alberta. So Alberta was Luke's great grandmother and she was from America, originally born in Chicago. Then her father died age 17. Her mother remarried a wholesale grocer, uh, Frank Leggett, and they moved to New York. What I'm really finding fascinating about Alberta is she liked to write. She wrote uh, so many letters and obviously people wrote letters back to her, but she liked to then take the letters, in particular those of her biological father, the one who, her, well, her father, father, um, the one who died age 17, and her grandfather, Solomon Sturgis, and she took those letters and typed them up. So remember when the typewriter, you know, she was at the, it was at the turn of the century that the typewriter uh, you know, it was this new invention. And so she was fantastic. So, so, is this, is so this, this, her, this is her. She's actually typed this herself. Yes. And, Can we have a look? Right, but can I just say something really quickly? She's typed this, this self. And when we were filming, and Stephen and Claire behind the camera here, when we were filming at Hinchingbrook, we went to Brampton, uh, Brampton Church, well, the Brampton Cemetery, and we went to the churchyard and we found Alberta's uh, stone but also we found a very bizarre stone that said William Sturgis, May 1st, 1907 until May 1st, 1908. And I, we couldn't figure it out. So I've just found it and she's documented it. And she says, 1907, Holly, who was her brother, Hollister, and Jean, Holly's wife, brought us Billy, William, born March 1st, 1907, and left for India. So they brought him to Hinchingbrook as a um, baby as a baby in September of 1907. So he was uh, five, six months old. And then it's so sad, but literally the exact year later, that's why it was confusing. In 1908, Billy died suddenly March 1st of septic pneumonia. Um, so it's... It, so, so can you just really show quite, me what what these are. Is so yeah, it, it's the timeline of when her, she was born. So, so this, is, this is a diary. That's my dad's handwriting at the very top. I but see. So she's writing up a timeline of her life. Up until? Up until 1909. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Looks like it stops there. I mean, I, I'll, yeah, the, I'm la sure. the last entry here, October the 17th, 1909, George, the children and I sailed to join mother at Ridgely. Now, Ridgely is a place I know, Ridgely Manor, close to Woodstock. So New in, York. In upstate New York. And to think that they would have been crossing over on a ship like the Titanic, sailing over to New York, um, absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. 1909, there we go. What's also fascinating about this is this gives me a really fantastic background 
of just Alberta for my dissertation, uh, a great primary source. But you can see she was born in 1877 and then she talks about being married in 1905 to Luke's um, grandfather who would uh, eventually be the ninth Earl of Sandwich, which would make Alberta the Countess of Sandwich. Um, so it's, it's brilliant. But one of the things I'm gonna focus on as Luke's looking through that is, interestingly enough, Alberta uh, was a follower of Swami Vivekananda and he was himself a teacher of uh, Vedanta Yoga. And Vedanta Yoga is, really has roots in Hinduism and also it's about service to others uh, in particular. And that's before she married your grandfather. And I wanna really look into um, what, what those teachings did for, uh, for Alberta and Ha what impact they had on her throughout her life because I know that she started to read palms. She was very much into astrology and seances and, um, and mystical mm. powers, if you like. So I'd, um, I'm, I want to get into that because obviously I have a background, I, my, you know, is, is in yoga and I think there are some real similarities there. So I'm noticing a couple of interesting things here. I mean, Swami Vivekananda, He's credited with bringing yoga to the West, yes. which is an amazing connection given Julie's interest and training and teaching in mm -hmm. yoga. It's unbelievable. So it's astonishing to be going back 100 years and investigating yoga as it related um, to Alberta yes. at that time through, through Vivekananda. Here's something extraordinary. Mm. So in 1905, she writes, uh, we return to 12 Bruton Street and mother arrived on Christmas Eve. We had left two days earlier for my first visit to Hinchingbrook. Now, she was already married by then and she'd never even been Thanks to Hinchingbrook. Hinchingbrook. So she would have had no idea what she was in for at Hinchingbrook. She must have married my great grandfather and they'd lived in London for most of that, for early, most of that. that early time. Isn't that extraordinary? Yeah, this one's quite sweet and it says, When we came out, Alberta was there looking too beautiful in a green sea satin tea, tea gown with her pearls and emeralds. A shout of delight went up. She just sat quietly and beamed on them all. She only stayed a half hour, but as Lady Evelyn said, it made all the difference and the boys loved her. And as one soldier said on leaving, now I can write home and tell mother. I mean, it was, isn't that just wonderful just to read that, um, uh, to read that, that they had met an American countess. That's the letter I kind of wanted to read to you. But bringing it back to you and the small amount of work that you've got ahead of you, mm. do you, do you think you've got enough source material? I yes, think, I, think, I think I have I think enough source material maybe too. Maybe too much source no, material. No, my tutor, and my course tutor thinks I need to write a book. Same. Can I just end on this note though? I'm fascinated. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get into this a little bit more, but I love this here. King Edward and Uncle Hinch, Hinchingbrook, 1906. So there you go. There is King Edward and right there at Hinchingbrook, the wing that was knocked down. King Edward VII. Yep. King Edward VII. <laughs> I'm so excited because I'm heading up to London. I am covering some of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee at Buckingham Palace. And I obviously won't be wearing this outfit, but a lovely, lovely dress. And just in case it rains, remember this is England, you never know, just in case it rains, I'm bringing my Le Chimo Iris boots. And I know the color of my dress has a little bit of blue in it as well. And I absolutely, you can see I've just worn these boots. Um, I will be sure to uh, clean them before I head to the Jubilee, but they're perfect in case it rains. That's it, I think I have everything that I need for covering the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Ah, I'm so excited. Here I go, everybody. Last bits in, boots, bag, and I'm out of here. Please help support this important part of England's heritage by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Live.
I have had a really busy day. And so one of the things that uh, I like to do is a sort of mindful walk, if you like. And it's not saying anything, it's being with myself. And luckily here at Mapperton, and especially this time of year, it's so spectacular and the scents uh, are incredible, but even just the lovely breeze. So it's just a nice moment for me to just reset, if you like, and reset using my senses, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm smelling, and in one sense, almost as what I'm tasting as well, sort of tasting the sweetness of the air and touching as well. So I'm just gonna give you all a lovely, just um, slow TV tour of the favorite spots that I have here at Mapperton. You enjoyed that mindful walk with me here at Mapperton Gardens. I mean, it is the most spectacular day. Blue sky, tiny bit of cloud, sun is shining, and you can just see the lushness of green and the flowers and the colors and the scents, and you know, and even the bird song right there. So it's just wonderful. So I'm here. You might have might recognize this. This is our installation sculptor installation called Open Sanctuary and this was done by Luke's very famous uh, cousin Fiamma Montague. She actually did the installation, the poppy installation at the Tower of London a few years ago. Uh, hugely successful and again this is just a wonderful place if you do come to Mapperton Gardens that you can come in here and meditate or you can ponder um, in a seated position or standing like me and sort of take it all in. I think she's just done a brilliant, brilliant job, um, a representation of humanity and of time. So we have 24, so 24 hours in a day, you being the, the 24th. And then here around, there are 365 
of um, these lovely, uh, you know, round sculptures here, representing, of course, 365 days in the year. It's wonderful. It's really fantastic. There's some fantastic energy around as well. And there is a lovely blackbird, I think, up there tweeting away. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, do come back to this video anytime you just need some space, you need to take a break from whatever it is you're doing, reset and enjoy the beauty of the world.